Hi, this is Abhin Bharti and we are here at the Spring One Platform Conference in DC and today we have Matt. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your company and yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Matt Swan. I'm the CTO of StubHub. Uh, StubHub is the world's largest event marketplace. Uh, we sell and offer millions of tickets daily in 48 countries. Uh, we, we connect our software and technology platform to developers, to large sellers, um, and to millions of consumers uh, through our mobile apps and, and websites to connect people to live events. Uh, you, you, are, you are kind of, you know, I don't know whether classic is the right word, classic case, you know, where um, suddenly you have to deal with a surge of, you know, customers coming in and then there may be a dry season, there is nobody. I'm trying to use, I'm trying to avoid all the tech jargons of yeah. valleys and peaks and everything. Uh, so uh, what unique challenges that you saw as the market is changing, technology is changing? Yeah, so we have a lot of demand from our customers. I think the biggest change uh, with with increasing penetration of, of of mobile, you know, amongst our users is the ability to be everywhere our customers need to be, uh, and what that really means is uh, when you think about our technology platform, how do we open up you know our APIs and give access to developers so that they can build and connect uh, the tickets and, and the, for the offers that, w- that we bring to customers uh, to applications kind of on StubHub, you know, and beyond. So we want to make sure that. Uh, we invest heavily in our, our mobile applications so that people have a very simple yet personalized and rich experience uh, to both buy in and sell their tickets. Uh, and we want to make sure that we give sellers uh, the tools that they need to make sure that they can reach and connect you know, their products to, to customers. And for how long have you been around as a company? Um, well, I've been around for a long time, but I would say I've been at StubHub for a little over a year. Mm-hmm. And how old is the company itself? Uh, the company is about 20 years old. Uh, so, we, so when you look at a company which is like 20 years old, most of the technology that we're talking about here are less than two years old or maybe six months old. So, so what kind of journey you had to go through, which we call digital transformation, to come to this word from that word? That's right. So we, um, we, we definitely are on a modernization journey. You know, having grown up in the Bay Area in the last 20 years, uh, we, we grew up and kind of built the company uh, you know, with a very much a, a monolithic technology stack. We were a very project-driven kind of company and, and culture, and, uh, and we're very kind of traditional and linear in the way that we built kind of software. Uh, our modernization journey, we've taken very much kind of a crawl, walk, run approach where you know, in this last year, we've, we've been very focused on uh, accelerating kind of the move to cloud and the move to commodity through automation of our build environments and continuous integration and delivery. Um, we're doubling down on technologies like React and Java and Spring to help us uh, break apart that monolith and create more of an event-driven microservices architecture. And that, that foundation that we are building on is also changing the way that we work. So we are empowering teams by creating more balanced full stack teams, giving them autonomy around products. So instead of focusing on a, on a project and kind of moving to the next project, we actually have product and outcome focused teams that wake up every day caring about their customer, caring about their metrics, and using these pl- platforms and technology to help them move faster and deliver more. You, you did kind of touch upon that, you know, that this is a the way I look at it, it's as much about technology as about people. And you did say, you know, you give that flexibility and freedom to your developer. So, so when you are going, you know, on this journey, what is the bigger, bigger challenge for you, technology or people? <laughs> people, I think, are often the biggest challenge. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, uh, we, we are blessed with an organization that is truly ready for change. Uh, and so I think we have kind of a first world problem, which is, uh, everyone that wants to actually move faster than sometimes we can uh, deploy the technology or work our way through it. And so um, we've been, I think, appropriately aggressive kind of and conservative about ensuring, you know, kind of the, the, the path that we're taking. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think with people, it's very important when you go through these changes to really over communicate and simplify what you're doing and why uh, to be very clear about how you're going to measure you know, the change, you know, in the value. And I think more often than not, when people see that, they tend to uh, react well and both and get excited about it. So, so as a CTO, what is your big challenge that when you look at your own roadmap, can you share that? Sure. I mean, we're always, I, I think as a leader, 
part of setting strategy is always looking around the corner and making sure that you're thinking enough about what's next and how you can uh, test your way into that to understand what's going to work for you and the company. But the reality of it is for, for every company, you know, and as a leader, you've got to focus a lot on operating and building what you have today. And so I think it's a, it's a combination of both. I think that in our modernization journey, um, we've, we've spent a lot of time automating and kind of fine tuning kind of what's in front of us, but also staying very close to uh, uh, what that North Star is of, of, of where we're going so that people understand uh, that we're not just looking at this tactically, that uh, we're also, they understand how it comes together over time. Right. Uh and some of the technologies we mentioned earlier, not technologies, but you know, paradigms or with serverless or React or there is so much ha that's happening. How do you keep up with all of that, and and how do you also encourage your own developers to dip their toes in everything? Yeah. Because you ha you don't even know you know what is the next uh, answer to your problems. So that's right. So I think. Um, we want to give, my, you know, my vision is to empower build developers and, you know, give builders an environment where they can just build um, and move fast and kind of have autonomy. Now, I think, you know, within that, we obviously, we, we work to try and have, you know, kind of standards where they make sense and for us to get kind of leverage and scale. But we encourage our developers to spend a certain amount of time making it easy for them to experiment and test and understand, you know, kind of what uh, the benefits of some of these technologies that come along. I think rather than focusing on the technologies, what we try to focus on is our customers and the customer pain. Because I think technology is just, uh, there are many, is you know, one of many tools that you have to go solve that pain. And I think when you have a long-term focus and a customer focus, then the best technology will, you know, will win. And who is your typical customer? You're not an end user like me, right? It could be an, uh, it could be an end user. Like you, it mm -hmm. could be a uh, consumer, could be another developer mm -hmm. consuming your service within the company or mm -hmm. a developer outside the company. Mm -hmm. It could be a seller, uh, a broker selling, you know, millions of dollars of tickets, or it right. could be you selling your, you know, your one-off ticket to a concert or season tickets for a, for right. a game. So, so how do you get feedback from this diverse, you know, group of your customers? Sure. Oh, well, we talk to them. You know, we, uh, we have ongoing dialogues either both through, through surveys and through research. Okay. Uh, we take feedback. We look at uh, customer service requests as they come in. Uh, I think inside the company, when we have our, our, our development and product teams and business teams, they, they come together on a weekly basis to discuss and understand and what, the, what that pain is that we're trying to solve and how we're going to measure it and how we can simply test our way through it. So right now, what is the what is the pinging pain right now, you know, customers? You know, you're feeling from them, and then you're like, "Oh, we still have to fix this." Yeah, I think that um, I think we have a lot of opportunity to improve the level of personalization and predictability of what customers want. I think a lot of what's next for us, kind of in the future, is really harnessing the power of our data, you know, through data science, through analytics and machine learning, like really focusing on trying to get. Uh, our results down to when I say a segment size of one where we know as, as well as you do kind of not only what you what you're looking for today but like where you want to be so that we can help inform your experience leading up to the event planning for that event whether you're at the event and or even sort of the memories you know after the event and how we memorialize that experience so when it comes to big data or machine learning or AI whatever you want to call it what are the platforms that you are looking at yeah, so we're uh, we're partnered heavily at the moment with uh, with Pivotal and Google uh, Google Cloud Platform. So we're looking at a lot of the analytics and uh, machine learning kind of capabilities to work out and kind of build uh, both a data lake and kind of a, a data access layer and kind of an ecosystem of tools on top of that that allows us to easily um, and rapidly experiment, kind of test, and then operationalize and deliver the kind of products to to customers. Right. This is totally off. It could be off record question. This could be off out of the context question. You talked about uh, the company deals with events, right? Uh, I am heavily into VR and AR. Yeah. So, so uh, and it could be a stupid question also, but I envision, I'm also a science fiction writer. I envision a world that where I don't have to go anywhere physically. Yeah. The whole, you know, I can be, you know, wearing a HoloLens or whatever. So yeah. since you have stakes in this, you know, how do you see at that world? 
Yeah, I think, look, that there's no question that that is going to be a part of our future, right, over some period of time. Um, you know, and it's relevant today. We're experimenting and using some of those technologies um, in, in somewhat very straightforward ways today where you have a virtual view uh, of what it looks like from your seat at the actual event to uh, a 3D view of kind of maps and guidance that we launched for Super Bowl, you know, this past year. Um, I think we have aspirations to experiment with a lot of things with virtual reality because still uh, our ability, a lot of what we bring to the table is connecting people yeah, with the experience and the joy of live events. And so whether that's through uh, a virtual or digital lens or whether that's through a physical or live experience, we expect to be there. And yeah, the, and then if you look at, you know, globally, it's physically not possible for everybody to be, though you would want everybody to yeah. be there. So, so that could be an extension of physical events as well. Uh, I, I think we talked about, you know, a wide range of topics, right? Is there anything you're like, hey, we should talk about that as well? Or do you think we have covered? I mean, we can sit and no. talk for hours, to be honest, but. <laughs> well, I, I think that, uh, you know, the, I think the thing that I'm most excited about kind of in this journey is, is continuing to kind of to report back and kind of have the conversation about kind of our progress and kind of what we're doing for customers. I think that this last year has been exceptional for us. We've, in a very short amount of time, been able to, you know, stand, stand up these platforms and operationalize them and deploy you know, a set of initial products that we're getting learnings and experience from, and we've set up ourselves up to move much more rapidly, you know, and experiment and really deliver more value for customers. And so I expect kind of in the, the, the next 12 months are even going to be uh, very different, you know, than the last. And I think that, um, you know, something that's gonna be pretty exciting. Perfect. Uh, okay, let's let's just stop talking about technology for a while, and let's talk about you for a second. Uh, when you're not uh, in, in looking at the future, uh, wearing your CTO head, what do you do in your free time? <laughs> what do I do in my free time? Um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time uh, snowboarding. Hmm. Uh, a lot of kind of outdoor activities. I love uh, I love being able to be kind of out out in the way and uh, sort of experience the joy of, of riding. How much do you travel because of your work? Uh, quite a bit. So how do you keep up with your hobby? Yeah, um, well, you just... Because you cannot <laughs> snowboard here, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it, it, there's definitely an impact. I think, look, anything you care about, you have to be disciplined and focused, and you can make the time. Look, whether it's, whether it's family, whether it's a hobby, or, you know, the, uh, any of your commitments. Or do you try to go to only those events which have some mountain ranges where you can snowboard? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes. I do, I do try, uh, sometimes when I'm traveling for business or... Uh, you know, we work to kind of to work that in, but I also, uh, you know, sometimes we, we just make sure whether it's kind of as a family or by myself that we, you know, we spend that time and, and make sure we go. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks for, you know, talking to us today and hopefully we will see you again next time at the next conference. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks a lot.